Hey guys, let me show you how to solve y double prime minus y prime equals zero. So we'll do this without assuming any solution forms. So by really simple, like essentially fundamental principles, so to speak. So we'll say y double prime equals y prime, and then we'll divide. So we'll have y double prime divided by y prime equals one. On the left hand side, if you think about that very carefully, what is it? It's derivative, right, of the following. Derivative with respect to x of ln of the absolute value of y prime equals what? Why is it like that? Well, think about it. How does the chain rule work, right? If you have the derivative of ln of, say, f of x, right, you have a function on the inside. So you'd have 1 over f of x, and then you'd have f prime of x, correct? Which is an f prime of x over f of x. Incidentally, this is called a relative rate of change. So here is following the same model, if you think about it, okay? If you differentiate this, you're going to have 1 over y prime times y double prime. So it's back to this left-hand side. So it's valid. Then we want to integrate. So I'm going to do the antiderivative here, and then dx, and then ln, absolute value of y prime. dx equals antiderivative of 1 dx. All right, so again... Uh, for the left-hand side here, just to remind you, to do something like this, the integral of the derivative of, say, 2x, like this, dx. So you'd first differentiate on the inside, so you have the integral of 2 dx, and then when you anti-differentiate, you get 2x, right, plus the constant, they're not important. So when you do it symbolically right here, it's the same logic. You see how over here you're beginning with, uh, right here, with 2x, and you're ending up with 2x right here, it's the same thing. So you're just going to end up with ln of the absolute value of y prime. That same inside, equals x plus c for attaching the c. Our goal is to try to find y. So what is y? We have ln. And also notice that here I put bars, right? Because it's ln. So you want to make sure that you have bars around this. Okay. So I'm going to exponentiate. I'm going to put e to the ln bars y prime equals e to the x plus c. So the e and ln are inverse functions. They cancel. So you just bring down the absolute value of y prime equals e to the x times e to the c, breaking apart the right-hand side into a product of these two. All right, that's going to be y prime equals plus or minus e to the c, e to the x, applying the meaning of absolute value. When you do that, you need the plus or minus because in absolute value, they're both positive, right? Like this, like this. Okay. So, but this is y prime, so we can integrate again. When you integrate y prime, you're going to have just y would be equal to the antiderivative, right? Plus or minus the e to the c, e to the x, dx, right? Plus some other constant we're throwing in called b. So y will be equal to plus or minus e to the c, e to the x. Here, remember that this part in red is just a constant. So you have just this plus b. And then you call a plus or minus the e to the c. So you just end up with y equals a e to the x plus b so i didn't really assume any particular form here for this solution but i kind of went through this process and we get this you can check that this will work but we should anyway well if you do it's going to work right because y double prime well let's go with y prime that's going to be equal to <clears throat> a e to the x so y double prime will be equal to a e to the x so if you plug them in you're going to have a e to the x minus a e to the x, which is equal to zero. So zero equals zero. This certainly is true. All right. So that's the solution to this without really assuming too much. Just going through some more fundamental math, I suppose. Thanks so much for watching. If you like these types of videos, please be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in another one.